The piano and its literature are vast. It's followed us for 300 years through a number of styles and periods. Originally, it's called forte piano, meaning loud, soft. And that's exactly what the piano does. It can be played loudly or softly and at any number of gradations in between. It served as a vehicle of expression for musical style going through the classical period, the romantic period, and contemporary music and even jazz right up into the time of the 21st century. Now, you may have been drawn to the piano because of jazz. Or you might be interested in the piano because of accompanying a gospel choir. The piano adapts to almost any mood we have. And it's simple, just 88 keys and three pedals below. The concept is simple. It's just you, your fingers, and the music. By comparison to the simplicity of the piano, the large pipe organ console looks pretty daunting. In this console, we have 181 stop tablets. We have four manuals. We have 32 notes in the pedal board, five expression pedals down near the pedal board, and we have a number of these little round things, pistons, which can be preset to draw any combination of stops you wish to program. You may already play the piano in a church or a synagogue. And very likely, there's going to be a pipe organ there. It may be in use today, or it may no longer be in use. At some point, someone may ask you to play the organ, and they won't think much about it because they think both the piano and the organ are keyboard instruments. As we're going to see, there's a lot more that goes into playing the organ well than meets the eye. This series of videos is produced under the auspices of the American Guild of Organists. It's designed to help you, a pianist, to make a successful transition to the organ and to add that skill set to all of your musical talents. So what are the differences between the piano and the organ? Well, there are some obvious differences. The first one being the scope or range of the keyboard. While a piano has 88 keys, the organ keyboard has at most 61 keys. It's a five octave span and it starts two C's below middle C and goes to the third C above middle C. When we measure it, it's 33 and a half inches. That same five octave range at the organ keyboard measures slightly less. 33 and a quarter inches. Now, that's not much, but it's enough to confuse any organist or pianist when they switch back and forth between the two keyboards. There's a slight variation to be aware of. Some organs, like this one here, are built according to historic models, such as were in effect in the 18th century. And here we have a number of variables that one has to get accustomed to. First of all, the manual compass is not quite five full octaves. 
In modern organs, we have 61 keys in the manual. Here we have 58. And on some, we even have as few as 56 keys. And the reason we don't need them up here is that the literature of this time from which this organ was modeled didn't use those keys. That only came in during the 19th and 20th centuries. The keys here are looking like piano keys in that they have light naturals and dark sharps. But in many organs of this style, you have the key colors reversed so that you have the lighter sharps and the darker naturals. If you're building electronic or digital organs, they can be built in a way that they're exactly identical one to the next. But in a pipe organ, everything seems to be custom. There's never any two alike. So you won't find the stops in the same places. Now stops are great here. The more stops you pull out, the louder it gets. And you see the stops come out about three or four inches. They're off here, and when they're pulled out, they're on. Now, I've just pulled out all of the stops on the main division of this organ. Pulling out all the stops usually means going all out, because here it's loudest and all the stops are out. But aside from all of these differences, uh, the main feature of a historic replica is that the key connections, that is between each of the manual keys and each of the pedals, is through a direct mechanical linkage to the pipe valves of the various divisions. So uh, you can actually feel it. There's a little bit of a cap there, and that's where the valve is going to be releasing. Now, of course, we need the secondary valves, which are the stops, to be engaged in order for any sound to occur. But just down the street, you're very likely to find a very different type of instrument. This one here is typical of an American organ. Tens of thousands of these were made over the past hundred years and installed in churches and auditoriums throughout America. Now, there are certain common traits. A mechanical action organ has stops often widely spaced and you pull far in order to get the stop engaged. Here the stops are on smaller draw knobs and you only have to move them about an inch to turn them on. They're organized in sections. You have the pedal section, the pedal division, the swell, the grate, and the choir. And you also have pistons, general pistons, which can be programmed. Pull out the stops you want for your combination, save it to the piston. When you're ready to have that come back, just hit the piston and all of the stops adjust automatically. And now, let's go back to the console where we started. Here's the organ console we started at just a few moments ago. It's an American organ, electro-pneumatic design, and it has features which are common to many, many organs you'll find throughout America. This particular organ has four manuals, and instead of stops that pull in and out like a tracker action organ, the stops are engaged by putting these little tablets down. When they're down, the stop is on. One other difference between the piano and organ is the way the keyboards feel, the keys, the way they respond, it's different. Of course, if you play more firmly and quickly at the piano, you're going to get a louder tone, but this does not translate into louder tone at the organ. Whatever you do, you get the same tone depending on what stops are drawn. Actually, the feel of the organ keyboard is often quite light compared to the piano. And this can be kind of a, a good thing if you have muscular strain playing the piano. You can avoid much of it playing the organ. One of the challenges for pianists is to become comfortable when seated at the organ. At the piano, you're used to having your feet on the floor and uh, to using a foot or both feet to pedal at the piano. 
But in the organ, you've got pedals that are often engaged with stops. And if you push down on them and you don't want to, you're going to hear something that is not what you want to hear. So you have to have good posture and learn how to balance yourself at the bench. Some things that help are the lateral board that's built into most benches, which is a foot rest. You can rest one or both feet on it at any time, and you can use the expression pedals if the organ is so equipped and it rests a foot there and between the two this helps you to balance and feel comfortable with good posture at the organ console. One similarity between all organs whether they're a historic replica or a modern pipe organ or a digital or electronic organ is this concept of different pitches. We have stops with various pitch levels designated. For example, if I play middle C on the eight foot stop, I hear the same C or the same pitch that I would if I played middle C on the piano. Now, if I play low C on an eight foot pitch stop, we hear this. It takes a pipe of approximately eight feet in length, resonating length, to produce this pitch on the lowest key of the stop. So that's the eight foot pitch, the eight foot pipe playing. Now, we have other pitch levels. We have 16 as well as eight, and then four and two. And with each one of those divisions, we get a higher and higher pitch, the smaller the number. Here's what a 16-foot pitch sounds like at middle C. Now, it'll be an octave higher when we go to an 8-foot stop, and an octave higher at a 4-foot stop, and an octave higher at a 2-foot stop. When we play the organ, we don't just draw 8-foot stops, we can, but we don't always. We have the option of drawing three pitches at once, eight, four, and two, for example. Watch, here's eight, but now with eight, four, and two, listen. Beginning to sound like something bigger and more exciting. It's an organ. So now let's have a little bit of homework and assignment. I'd like you to take a piece that's normally played on the piano or the harpsichord and play it on an organ. Find yourself an organ, pull a couple of stops on one of the manuals and try it. The piece I'd like us to do is the Fugue in C minor. Uh, it's from J.S. Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier, book one. One of the things we have to find out first though is to see whether it fits within the range of the organ keyboard. The piano has 88 keys, the organ, 61, or in this case, 58 notes. We're in luck here because uh, we have low C, which is here, which is our lowest note, and we have plenty of room up top to cover all of the notes. We won't have to miss any notes due to the range or compass. So try it and make note of what you find out when you do try it, and we're going to discuss it all in the next lesson. <laughs>